Yeah, nobody. It's just for us. Real. Alright, right now, we're in the W123 rally car. You guys from Savage Garage pulling up. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, you guys saw the W123 rally car arrive last time. The fuel pump crapped out on us, it won't start. So now Lou is gonna grab the car, take it over to his shop, assess what's wrong with it, and get a brand new fuel pump and whatever else it needs. <laughs> It's not just old stuff, guys. It's new stuff, too. Guys, we're doing what we usually do here on a Monday. We're reviewing the next drops. So what we do is we watch the first cut. We check it out. We see what's good and what's not. What needs to stay, what needs to go. So that's what we're doing right now. These two both came Friday plus that? Yes, but four Tom, cars came four Friday, cars. Bro. These two? This one? You can't see Julio. You miss one day, it's big things happen. Sick, big things. He went full Japanese tribute. Where did this Bowen. come from? England. It's a UK ting. <laughs> ting. It just means sting. Oh, this is crazy. This thing is nasty, man. The color, the body, the carbon fiber steel. Man, he did his thing with it. Oh, white man, you killed it. Marhaba, Malim. Shabab, Sir. Sure, sure, sure. How many cars do you have? Okay, Allah, Allah. Okay, bye, bye. Okay, 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 bye. Everyone's going crazy. He says it's the real deal, but it's a long one. It's not just, it's like a limo and it's why. Uh -huh. He said he put up the picture on the fucking, he put, he put up the picture on his Instagram. Everyone's going crazy. Everyone hit him up. Guys hit him up from Britain. Guys hit him up from Germany. Everyone's saying they'll pay whatever. He's telling me to make an offer. He doesn't know how much we should offer. The car belongs to King Al Fahad uh, oh, yeah. from, from Saudi Arabia and he has 2,000 cars. How fucked is it? It's not that fucked. It's just dirty. He said he can polish it up and make it look better. Da -da 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 -da. Point is, if it's a is real, it an actual wider he, Royale. Yes, he says it makes the 560 look very small when you put it next to it. The SGS Royale, as you guys might know, was the, the only time they ever cut the 126 in half and made it wider and also made it longer. It's bigger than the, the regular W126 chassis. Uh, one has been found in Saudi Arabia, and I'm trying to get uh, more information right now from our guy out there. So uh, we're just talking about it right now. I mean, uh, all right, guys, headed to the big stadium right now with the right-hand drive AMG W124 wagon and the Baby Hammer 3.4. It smells a little burnt. Yeah, can I use your phone to call Victor? Yeah. A few moments later. Another dead battery. These cars, they sit around. They don't get enough uh, time to be on even on tenders or anything. So I'm gonna go get Julio right now. He broke down on the highway, right at the exit. So this is right here. We're gonna put a jump pack on the battery and drive it to the stadium. Only a couple miles, not even. Crazy when I was eight, eight years old. You know what I mean? It's just wow. Like. <laughs> As you can see, we got this door panel going. We 
we got a couple Mars, like it's like uh, scratches. I can't tell if it was from a scrap or somebody just rubbed up against this. But you see we got more scratches up here. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the wool pad for the first stage and then see how, how much it knocks it down. And then from there we'll take it to the next pad and step by step, guys. All right. Stay tuned. Like right here, you see we still got this one little scratch, but for the most part, and then over here we still got some of the, the deeper ones. Let's hit it a little bit more with the woo pad and see. So it's looking a lot better. I mean, this cup is still there, the scratch is in the paint. You see how it's like mm -hmm. wet? So that's deep. I could either wet sand it, but the problem if I wet sand it, I gotta check on uh, my paint meter, see how much paint, you paint is left right now. Yeah. And I'll, I'll see. All right. But that's like the last resort. You know, if they want it, if they want it to be like completely clear, then you gotta wet sand it. They want just the swirl's gone, and the way the you know, scratch toned down the way it is, mm -hmm. then it'll stay at least, but you know, it's all part of too. rally car right here you guys see it arrived the other day uh, it wasn't running uh, something uh, relay or something went wrong on it we got it fixed now it's running now we got it over here it's out on the detail Julio was getting it right when we put it in the showroom this car is 15 straight out of the UK it's a right hand drive car very very special gold color AMG rally car let's go guys so I just noticed right this is a right hand drive car and it's the first time I've seen the windshield wipers set up going the opposite way it's dope Education. <laughs> so it's an artist. It's like an artist. 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 It's the first drive, right hand drive, AMG car. It's the first car we get with all these gadgets right here. You got a bunch of different things for uh, rallies, I guess. It says here, spots high, low. You got this gauge right here, SWR meter. It's a pretty special car. A rally car, you see uh, all the little lights on the front. You got all the markings all over the car. You got AMG on the side of the car. This is a classic uh, rally AMG thing that we do. First impression, this car drives really smoothly. Uh, it was uh, driven often, 170,000 miles on it. So the owner, he drove it a lot in the UK. He did put some miles on this thing. So most of the cars have been driven a lot. They drive better than the rest. Especially low mileage cars, the collection, they don't drive as good as you think they would. Mm. Low miles, it's not always a good thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Alright guys, initial thoughts on this car. Uh, first drive was dope. Um, it just needs an alignment. Suspension is good. The car has power. Kick down works. Might have a vacuum leak. You gotta check that out. But other than that, it's cool. The guy wrote labels on everything just so we know what's what. There's a cutoff switch in here. The battery right there. There's a PA system for when you're doing rallies. You know what I mean? You could talk to your other guys. So, very interesting car, W123 rally car. We will be doing a deep dive on this one, obviously, just like every other car. But for now, we're just taking you along for the first drive. It's the Patina Boys. Let's go. All things hip. All right, guys. 
special day today. We got uh, these guys from Savage Garage pulling up, big YouTube channel. So let's see what they're talking about. Let's go, Patina Boys. Welcome guys to the kingdom of Boca Raton. Welcome to the Tina Collective, the biggest ever do it. And uh, yeah. let's take a dive into what we got over here and let people know what we're doing. A lot of guys do car stuff. Kind of in the quiet in front of himself. Sure. That's what we like about you guys doing in the open. We're doing it in the open too. So we want to share with the world kind of what we're doing. So I'm you super know, excited. The thing is, I, I had seen just over the last few months on Instagram, I had seen just posts recommended to me. And yeah. they were all photos of you, your guys' cars from either just random pages posting it or you guys yourself. Yeah. And some of the cars I look at and go, you know, those aren't actually in the US, right? You right. Know, like you, because most, a lot of the cars you guys have here, um, the only place I've seen anything even close to it has been in other countries. Yeah. I've right. never been here. So when I started seeing photos of you guys down in like South Beach or right. you know by the coast, wherever, and you're taking out some of these cars that I've never seen anywhere other than um, you know in another country, it blew me away because you guys are actually driving. And that was always the spirit of what we did. It's just like let's get you know like let's do something. Yeah. Cars, not just put them in a museum. Right, right, so right. to be able to actually have them all and actually drive them, yeah. use them, and sh share them with the rest of the world, that's a big deal. That was the goal and the vision to begin with, is like just to bring something that we used to see in magazines and see on little green, very grainy photos into yeah. real life, and not just bring them to America, put them somewhere tropical. I mean, if you do this in New York, it was, it's cool landscaping, but this is different. This is like putting the cars where you never really been to like that Miami Vice era once again. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, that it's working out for us. And uh, now uh, you, you mentioned the museum. We actually are making a museum because we want to make it accessible to the world. But we also will be driving them just like that museum that we visited. Uh, the Rebs Institute yeah. somewhere. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 You, know, you have the cars there, but also you drive them regularly. So it's uh, to be a hybrid of both. But. Um, he told me, he's like, you yeah. guys have your own music. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Me. That's actually me on the songs. Uh, Sweet. The most of the songs you're hearing is from my album, Nothing For Sale, which actually is about the whole lifestyle and everything we're yeah. doing. So like we say a lot, it's not just a uh, business, it's a lifestyle that we turn into yeah. a business essentially. Sure, absolutely. And we're just monetizing our life. And yeah, that's what it is. I want to talk about Gimbalas because I got them. I want to talk about Bradis because I drive them. So, SGS, yeah. the high garage. And then we're the first, you know, to make a, uh, so I'm pointing at his chain right here. I'm over here. I'm oh, I thought you were pointing at me. Wow, the SGS. Uh, that's awesome. That's, that's you know, and 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 so we're just bringing back a different oh, era. That's awesome. And putting things that people never thought of, I guess. I don't know, I've never seen anyone yeah, else do it. So yeah, so nothing for sale, Vico, nothing for sale. Go look up the album, guys. Could you tell me about this? Because I didn't even know this existed. Is there? Is this a Bravis? Five fifty seven. It's a Bradus five lock fifty seven. We found it for available as one of the few cars here from the US is actually in California. Yeah. It was owned by a film producer out there and uh, they made this one in the US and then uh, doesn't have any engine modification. It made one other one in Europe that does an engine modification. Mm -hmm. This is a highly the most customized uh, uh, Maybach you'll probably see out there aside from some of the Xenotech stuff, but it was the only one Bradus really touched. The rims themselves, they were the first time Bradus ever made rims this large. Well, I was just about to yeah. say, they look huge. Like, yeah. what are those, like 22s? 22s, yeah. <laughs> wow. Bradus 22. Those are $30,000 when yeah. they came out. Jeez. And we got here with the Bradus Safe. Oh, yeah. This one is a Bradus Safe. Get yeah. the fuck so out of here. So, this one actually won Best Luxury at the Rick Ross Car Show out of uh, like 1,200 cars. New World Rolls Royce. Yeah. New World Rolls Royce, new Maybach. Guys, what do we do? We drove this car all the way to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just so you know, we drove the two um, uh, Maybach. Julio was one of the drivers. We yeah. drove them all the way there. So this car was already half a million dollars factory when it came out. So you right. said the Brabs, you spent another two hundred thousand dollars to get to where it needs to be. So someone's like, okay, I'll spend a, a point seven of a ticket out there, you know, to go out there. That's, and see this car. that's crazy, man. Shut up and take my money. It's international footprint we have. So we have yeah. what we have here in the U.S. We have operations in Abu Dhabi, Middle East, and Dubai. Uh, we have operations in Germany. We have operations in Canada. So we have overseas at any given time 40 to 70 cars that are awaiting entry, or we're in the process of, uh, of, of bringing them in. And we keep, there. the number keeps going down, and then we keep buying cars. So it's like it's always staying around 40, right. 50. Yeah. So what's the one? Is there a unicorn right now that you're chasing? Because I'm yeah. sure you got. Mm. There's Do you a want to unveil it right there's now? There's a few of them out. There's a few of them out there, of course. You know, we look at really extreme modifications of things that are out there, um, things like SGS Royales, which are just like kind of one-off cars, one-off unicorns, mm -hmm. you really don't see. Uh, certain Gimbala Mercedes, if you're out there, you have a Gimbala Mercedes. We have three in the collection, we're always looking for more. Those yeah. are tough to find. Uh, but really, it's all those kind of one-off crazy tuners. Um, and, and it's interesting, you know, we'll see maybe like a one-off build, 
that we'll want really, really badly, but no one else is paying attention to. And then we sure. grab it, and then all of a sudden the market shifts and say, we want that one too. Yep. Like, 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 uh, you know, this car is a one-off, very, very, very rare car. When we brought this out, everyone now wants one. You can't find a G-Wagon like this. Yeah. Well, they only made six of them. This is one of uh, three cabrios they made. Yeah, this so is one of the two-door two wagons, yeah. too. The front, the the front, front end, end. You're missing really the front end. That's what that's right. What, what am I missing? It has the front end of, a, of an S-Class, essentially. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. has the, the lights see, okay. of a, a W116 and the front of a, uh, the grill of a W116. Ah, yes. And we talk about early AMG. Look at this. You'll never see this. Oh, and that, right. like, that's one of the pr like That's a real AMG yeah, bumper made for this car specifically. Wow. It only made like six bumpers, so that bumper is like A couple of unicorns I'd like to mention before. Yeah, we go. please do. The BB Magic Top, something we're always chasing. Awesome for the BB Magic Top. Okay. And only made two or three of them. I'm just going to have many in my mind, but I'm just going to yeah. mention one more. The R129 Golden. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, you know. yeah, you know, yeah. You know. By Bo Shirt, Bo Shirt yeah. Engineering. Do you have any cars from like, you know, I always think like the Salt of Renee. Standing. Explosion. <laughs> Right behind Get the our, you our, have our guy, Julio, right here. We're going to pop the It's a new arrival from the UK. This one just came in from the UK. You, you know about the salt and the Brunei oh, yeah. stuff, well, right? Brunei is one of, the guys we, one, of the, one of the guys we looked up to doing, uh, starting this collection. Shout out to Jeffrey. I mean, one of the brothers. And this right here, you see right here the carbon oh, fiber. Oh my gosh. It says Royal Family of Brunei, 7.3. Number 52. <laughs> this is a SL73, one of the rarest AMGs in the world. Guys. Holy shit. Oh my so god. Yes, we do have Brunei cars. <laughs> There's actually more Brunei cars on the way. We're going to keep that on the DL. Right now. <laughs> wow. How do you even get how do you get That was parts my question. How do you things? like I imagine it's very difficult. That's not a problem. We're not worried no? about the parts. We're more worried about the cars. Get the car first, and then we're worried about the parts. It's hard finding cars like these still intact because sure. people just stopped caring for a while. They've mm -hmm. kind of been through a lot. They've been sitting around pulling out the desert, stripping them four parts for other yeah, cars. Yeah. So what's happened with a lot of these uh, classic Benzes that were really tuned is that people just thought they weren't uh, worth a whole lot at one yeah. point and just stripped them down to different things. So a lot of them are lost to time. Mm -hmm. So you find an example that's intact, still has good mileage, still has all the right markings on it. 100% yeah. a legit car with all the history and the VIN, and the VIN codes. Yep. Um, you know, it's just very rare to find it. You kind of hold on to it. But everything else, the parts and everything else running it, we can get it done. We can get it fixed. We get things manufactured. There's no real budget there in terms of getting these cars back and running. We want to make sure they, they work and are, are where they should and be. Just, it's really awesome you guys have preserved. 190E uh, Koenig Special. Look at the wide. Uh, the ABC exclusive. There's way more Koenigs on the road than the ABC exclusives, and they both got sued by Ferrari. I have a 97 S600, yes. and I've wanted to do like some very period correct modifications uh -huh. to it. I wanted to do like a custom um, custom color um, gauge faces, mm -hmm. and when I was looking at like what that could look like, the car that kept coming up was that Koenig right there, that car. You own that car. <laughs> How many of these cars when I it's not a version of the car I saw online. This is the car I saw online. Because from this era, they only made so many. Yeah. No, of course. And this is an example of, like, I mean, I can't think of any other ones like this. Before we started bringing lots to the forefront, the market hadn't shifted to where people were really appreciating these cars, and the era was kind of at the tail end. The R129 you're next to right now cost more than a, a Ferrari Testarossa when it came out. Yeah. You know? So why were all these other Ferraris and Lamborghinis that were at the same time growing in, in appreciation, people looking into them and revering them, when you had much better engineered, more reliable, better cars uh, coming from Mercedes at the time? They actually maybe made in more numbers, yeah, but then people went and tuned them even further. So that's where our obsession came in, you know? These cars deserve to be put in the limelight, and that's what we really try to do. Oh, <laughs> Original NG cars. like getting these cars here like what, what are some of the craziest like you know so, stories of getting them? i'll talk in general about it and then sure. i'll talk some stories <laughs> of those we didn't say anything too bad i don't think nope just speaking of facts so i hope everyone enjoys it uh if you want to see our first podcast check out the savage garage i'm not sure when they're dropping it but it will be the only podcast with me and daniel talking our talk and a lot of information in there that you guys want to hear, a lot of cool stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to these guys already, check them out. The link will be in the description below, but we're definitely going to do some more stuff with you guys in the future. Next time I'm going to bring by my S600. Let's I'll make it happen, man. Let's do some crazy things. But sure. either way, thank you guys for watching. Take care and stay savage.